Assalamu alaikum. Let's see, am I live on Instagram? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, I have a post lagai which is going, which is triggering a lot of people. Or, it is not comments at them. Uh, within an hour or two, I was busy today with my daughter. She had come to visit me and we were busy doing our things and then we saw the comments and she requested me to just do a live mom because this is this is too much and too many comments you can't respond to each of them so just go ahead and do a live and explain what you want to explain because that could be the best way so uh, she just left and I decided okay I'll join you guys for a quick live and give you the explanation for today's post which is triggering a lot of people which is uh, men are not superior to women I don't know why that statement had to trigger so many people but at the same time I understand the programming that a lot of you guys men and women both have and when somebody triggers your programming it is it is very painful and uncomfortable for some people now before I begin I want to acknowledge all those uh, self-assured strong men that actually posted as well commented and appreciated the fact that I had made this statement and totally agreed with it actually one of them said um, that this was the best post he had seen in 2024 and this commenter was a man and uh, so kudos and a shout out to all those self-assured strong men who did not get triggered by this statement and for all of you weak men who got triggered by this statement I have some explanations for you that you keep asking me and I have said it so many times before but I will say it again for you today and before I begin I want to tell you today's video is gonna be a little bit um, my tone is not going to be as loving as it normally is because sometimes when the kids have been making noise for too long and they are really rowdy and they're misbehaving then the mother who is very loving and nurturing can also um, spank them and make them see sense when they're not seeing sense and making too much noise so that's what I'm doing today now let's begin with the ayat that all of you keep quoting because the, the poster said men are not superior to men Allah does not discriminate based on gender race and color etc so you need to define which lens you are going to read the Quran through either you accept that Allah is just Allah is justice which means Allah is fair then when you read the Quran it will reveal itself to you in a very different way which most of you have not done and I understand majority of people who commented who got triggered are used to reading the Quran's translation mostly in Urdu or translations done by scholars from the Indo-Pak subcontinent and because of that they think this is the Quran for your information not only have I read the Quran many times Alhamdulillah I also happen to understand Arabic better than an average person because I have lived in Kuwait when I was younger and learning Arabic was mandatory for us actually I used to speak Arabic when I was younger I can no longer speak Arabic but I can still understand better than an average person let's say so I have a habit of reading the Quran with translations not just from the translators of Indo-Pak subcontinent who come with their own conditioning and they translate in a way which I don't agree with but I also like to read the translations done by people that really understand Arabic well or who are linguistic experts. For example, Noman Ali Khan, who is not a scholar of Hadith, nor is he a scholar of Fiqh. He is a linguistic expert, especially an expert on the Quranic language. So when he translates the Quran, he does it in a manner which is very different from an average person, even if they are a scholar his expertise is in Quranic language so his uh, translation is all over YouTube please search for it Noman Ali Khan explaining Surah Nisa ayat number 34 you will be able to get many videos where he's talking about that the word Qawwam this is the translation the word Qawwam does not mean ruler 
All scholars now agree on it, the progressive scholars. Now, Indo-Pak subcontinent scholars want to insist on this translation because they have a lot of, they have reason why. This is the only way they can control women. And a lot of the, the programming that they do with their men and their women starts with some of some basic things. And one of those is this mistranslation of Surah Nisa, ayat number 34. Some women, some men also blamed me. Why are you misguiding people? Why are you denying the Quran? First of all, I am not denying the Quran. You are, because I am actually telling you the correct translation. And uh, second of all, how could I be misguiding people by speaking the truth? If I'm speaking the truth and the truth of Quran, how can that be misguided? So if there's a disconnect, that means you are misguided because of your thinking, your conditioning or whatever dogma you uh, hold on to. Because I believe in only one authority and that is Allah. That's it. Allah and his prophet, nobody else. So I don't care which scholar I am disagreeing with. I don't have an identity tied to a maslak or a firqa. I don't care. Somebody had asked me, can you please tell me what kind of a Muslim you are? Uh, I'm a Muslim. That should just, that should be enough. I believe in the Quran. I believe in the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. That's it. I don't need to, um, um, Ijazab, I, you want me to translate the uh, complete uh, ayah, but the problem is I don't have it in front of me and both of my devices right now are, are on live. So I will have to switch frames. But anybody who wants to pull it up, you can. It's Surah Nisa, ayat number 34. So um, clearly says uh, that men are kawam over women. That's the actual translation. Now, the word kawam means maintainer, guardians. So, yes, so this is also a good one, which somebody said it comes from the word kama, which means to stand. Uh, so this means the one who will stand physically, emotionally, financially with the women by any situation. I agree, I agree with, with you. It also means to uphold. uphold right? So they have to uphold, which also means, by the way, you're not going to oppress but you have to uphold the women, let them grow, let them breathe, let them be free. You know, you uphold something that is growing. So that's another meaning of it. Um, ka meaning, I know is a very favorite meaning used by especially the scholars of the Indo-Pak subcontinent, which has led to a lot of problems. One of them being that it lends to this misnomer that somehow they are superior, which they are not. And I have explained it many times, even if you are very stubborn and you don't want to let go of the translation hukmaran then be my guest keep translating it as hukmaran but then you have to look at the definition of ruler or hukmaran under islamic law under islamic jurisprudence what you are doing is looking at what hukmarani looks like under this um, western uh, secular definition which is mostly a uh, colonist you know they are the ones who believe hukmaran is like a king everybody else is a subject king is a ruler uh, islam does not see that the only authority islam recognizes is that of allah and human beings are allah's slaves especially the mu'minin allah's authority is the only authority recognized and under that certain institutions and stuff are given authority but based on the rules defined by allah and the ruler in um Islamic jurisprudence, anybody who's Hukmaran, for example, Khalifa Rashidin, Khulafa Rashidin were the rulers. Well, look at their lives. They were in service to the Ummah. So if you look at Hukmaran also, then the way Islam sh uh, shows Wajat Ali Sahab, Aap na ya. So if I'm a wrong number, leave. I keep begging you people, leave my page. I'm not trying to convince anybody. I'm giving explanations in hopes that people who do want to get deprogrammed will get deprogrammed. So you don't like me, you think I'm a wrong number, I'm uh, you know, creating fitna, facade, whatever, leave, please. Uh, that would be, a, um, uh, I would be grateful for that because you're dis you know, disrupting my algorithm. So the algorithm of uh, meta. So uh, if you're going to look at Hukmarani, you look at it from the perspective of service, which is in Islam or the perspective of responsibility. Al Hukmarani first comes with responsibility. You have to look at the responsibilities given to the person who is claiming to be a Hukmaran. So for that example, look towards the Khulafai Rashid and you will get a pretty clear picture that their responsibility 
was to maintain justice, aman, salamti, peace, fairness, kindness for all, not just Muslims, but for non-Muslims as well and for all of Allah's creation. So here is what I want you, and then I'm going to uh, ask you to make your case, okay? I'm going to give you a chance. So then the ayat goes on to say that Allah has given his favor uh, upon some as compared to others, right? So that's one of the uh, meanings of as you go further. So what does that mean? Allah has given his favor. So favor could be in the sense of uh, material wealth, money. It could also be in the form of physical strength. It could also be in the form of brain, whatever. But Allah doesn't define it here uh, uh, exactly. However, as you go further, Allah says, and because they um, spend from their wealth upon their women, their families. So this was that Allah has we know Islam came 1500 years ago. Women were considered property. It is ayat number, it is Surah Nisa, ayat number 34. So Allah has said, uh, you know, when Islam first came, women were considered property. They were inherited as property. Allah gave freedom to them. Allah told them clearly, everybody. That's why Islam was so radical that no, women are equal to men. They are not property. And in Allah's eyes, they are equal. However, Allah knew at that time that pretty much all over the world, women had little to no rights. Islam was the first religion to give rights to women. And therefore, the fuzzle as far as, you know, strength and when it comes to protection and money was concerned, it was in the hands of men. Therefore, that is being said that this is you have to spend from your wealth on women. Uh, this was the starting point though for Muslims Allah has given many points which is like a starting point and Allah tells you which direction he wants you to move towards such as slavery for example Allah told us that he created rules for us which should have abolished slavery unfortunately as Muslims we uh, were not sincere in that either and we continue to have slaves for almost 1400 years but we were supposed to move in that direction which with women also we did move in that direction. For the early centuries, women had freedom. But then, a few hundred years ago, some of the scholars who were impressed by Yunani philosophers, okay, and Greek philosophers, and Greek philosophers hated women, so Muslim women, uh, Muslim scholars, because of their influence of those scholars, started to change their stance. However, we only look at Allah's word, and what the Prophet ﷺ said. That's it. I don't accept anybody else's um, authority on this. No scholar, nobody except Allah. When it comes to Allah and His Prophet, nobody else's authority is recognized and you also need to reject it <clears throat> when it goes against Islam. So, uh, and then when the ayat continues and it talks about obedience, the obedience is not to the man because if the man is not superior, why should the wife be obedient to him? Both men and women are supposed to be obedient of Allah Ta'ala. We are all slaves of Allah. When you admit that, when you accept as a woman especially, because many women got triggered by this too. I don't know why. If you are a slave of Allah, how can you accept obedience to anybody else? A slave has only one master. One master. Do do ni hote master ek slave ke. You have only one master and that master is Allah. Now, if you have a husband and, you know, uh, like a sane person, you should be having a good relationship. There should be love and consideration and all of those things between a husband and wife. And I can frankly tell you, there are many couples that I have counseled that have good marriages. There's never any question of obedience and who's superior and who's not. In good marriages, these kind of questions never arise. And if you are in that kind of a marriage and you like it that your husband acts like the head of the household and he gives you orders and you like being obedient, okay, then go ahead. Go ahead and do that. So, um... Now, obedience to parents, this is another thing that we have. Uh, Joe, thank you for your comment. Yes, both men and women are created from a single soul. So how can then we be unequal? I agree with you. Valid point. Thank you. Uh, we are supposed to love and respect our parents. There are a lot of toxic uh, parents in Pakistan who are destroying marriages because they expect their son or their daughter to obey them in absolutely wrong things. 
and it's because of this toxic mentality that we just don't even know so we think we have to obey our parents but what we have to do is respect them as a husband you have responsibilities to your wife for which you are answerable to allah as a wife you have responsibilities to your husband you're resp- answerable to allah and both of you have responsibilities to your own parents and your own you know whatever you're doing for which you're answerable to allah so here let me ask you because many of you keep you know fighting about this i'm superior because i'm a man I'm, Mm, what makes you feel superior? You have to give me some valid answer. Make your case. That's what I'm here to do. Challenge you. Make your case. With a woman, uh, with a woman like me, how will you prove to me that you are superior to me? Mariam, I left PhD with scholarship last year due to mental health issues. I'm unable to get out of this guilt. Well, today's uh, uh, video is not about that. I have many videos about how to overcome guilt that is especially misplaced. So make your case to me, my friend. If you are a man and you feel you are superior to women just because you were born with a certain kind of anatomy in which you actually had nothing to do, you did not have to accomplish or achieve anything to come out of your mother's body as a man. So you tell me how you are superior to me based on everything, um, uh, what I just said. So make your case. Here's, I'm going to make my case first. If you think it's because of your earning ability, if you are because you think you um, maybe take care of your family and men are the only ones who can make money, well, here's the thing. I am a multimillionaire in the US, alhamdulillah, by the grace of my Lord, made everything with my own two hands, my own two arms. So you tell me, make your case, how you are superior to me, okay? So I employ men who work for me, who take their salaries from me with which they take care of their families. Make your case, how are you superior to me? Hazrat Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha, the first Muslim, the first believer, till Qiyamat, she's going to be given the title of the first believer, was a businesswoman. She was financially independent and many people in Makkah actually benefited from her. She was very charitable, very generous. And the work of prophethood, mashallah, say, the, she spent all of her wealth in the, in the way of Nabi Akrim Sallam's Nabuat and all of those things. So make your case. How are you superior? Don't say that. Don't give the example of Hazrat Khadija. Of course I will because she's from my gender. So you got to make your case that um, somehow you're superior. Um, I have also employed a finance manager, by the way. If you say, well, Hazrat Khadija was a businesswoman and it was Hazrat Muhammad Sallam who did the work. Well, she was wealthy before Prophet Sallam as well. So, um, the the person who is recognized for his hikmah and for his authority, uh, Hazrat Umar Allah, even Quran recognizes his wisdom. The biggest ruler this planet has ever seen employed a woman as his finance minister. Okay, so again, make your case. How are you going to make your case, especially against someone like me? I have in my employment men who are. Uh, double masters from the United States, from Ivy League universities. I have just recently uh, employed somebody else who's actually a millionaire and he got paid by me for a consultation job. Uh, Another person who's a New York Times bestselling author got employed by me. So how are you superior? And if you want to Google these, if you want to search these people, the first person is Mike Koenigs, K-O-E-N-I-G-S. Google him, message him and ask him, did Adam actually do this? And then the other person is Chris Atwood. So if I can employ people who are so successful, men who are very successful in this world, then you tell me how men are superior than me. Then you have physical strength. A lot of people talked about physical strength. Yes, that is a favor Allah has definitely bestowed upon men uh, than women. However, how does that make you superior? In those days and age when the world was still pretty violent, um, the, then, yes, women needed the protection of men. 
Uh, but things have changed now. There are a lot of women who are bodybuilders, who are wrestlers, who do all kinds of things. And I can personally, if you think this makes you superior to me, I can hire the best uh, bodyguard for myself who is more well built. I can promise you more muscular, more agile and better at this job than you. So how will you prove that you are superior than me? Make your case. Show me how you're superior. And by the way, you should know that um, I happen to be a good shot as well and I carry so even somebody a man attacking me is not going to be that much um beneficial for him because i might actually come out ahead even if i don't i'll at, at least take four or five guys out before they take me out so make your case how are you superior so yeah that's what i just said shanas that they are stronger physically but in a civilized world we don't need that do we i live here alone i live on a lake house i've shared pictures with you guys which is out in the wilderness it's out of the city because i like being out of the city so i live in the wilderness by myself on a lake and all alone i'm not scared um when i have uh, recently there was a raccoon outside my house and i had some friends over some of them were men <laughs> they got scared i took care of the raccoon i have killed snakes not that i was pleased to do it i, I screamed a lot but i did kill the snake there's a lot of um, things I can do around the house because somebody mentioned, can you change a tire? Um, I, I'm able to do a lot of handyman stuff. I'm able to change cabinet doors. I'm able to, um, you know, uh, do lots of other things around the house myself, which you would typically think only a man can do. And as far as answering the question about can you change a tire? Uh, first of all, no, because I don't need to. I can pay someone to do it. And my daughter can change a tire not only that she can also patch it she's that good can you patch a tire can you actually fix that if, if your tire has a hole can you fix it not only that she's so good with cars she's a car buff she, you can just show her a picture of any car purani gari or nai gari and she will be able to tell you the make and model and also the year and if she sits with you in your car and there's something wrong with the car, just by riding in the car with you, she'll be able to tell you there's something wrong with the whatever. She's good at that stuff. She will be able to do that. So how do you prove? Make your case. How are you superior then? Um, <clears throat> so then you talk about the fact that men have more akal than women. And a lot of men don't say that. There are some men i'm sorry to say who are stupid who still say that because there's so much evidence that we have that shows no men are not smarter than women uh, some women are smarter than some men and at the moment if you look at the stats muslim women are outperforming muslim men they're getting better grades they're getting higher degrees and they're earning more money pretty soon they will for sure outperform men muslim women are considered in the west a trillion dollar industry Muslim women, not Muslims, Muslim women are considered a trillion dollar industry. You know, this guy, Ejaz, he's just making a fool of himself. He continues to do it. I will have no choice but to ban him because he has not heard. For days, he's been posting nonsense on my page. The guy just doesn't understand that he's when to give up, you know. Make your case, Ejaz. If, you've got, if you're so smart, make your case. What have you accomplished? What have you done that makes you superior to women? So um, then, um, uh, yeah, so we were talking about that some people say, well, women are emotionally weak. Really? Let's look at that. A lot of times women are emotionally sensitive. Yes, our emotional system is more delicate, does not mean it's weak. We can actually withstand, a mother can withstand a lot of things. Uh, I mean, th this is uh, stupid. Deny the law of inheritance, that makes you superior somehow? No, it doesn't make you superior. It is the, it is the function of the society, especially from those days, because men had to support women. They had that responsibility, so they would get a, a more of a share. I mean, that is really a dumb argument. Doesn't even make sense. The argument that people have raised, which is prophecy. Okay, why was prophecy not given to women? First of all, again, it does not show that men are superior to women in any way. 
Because no matter what, every single prophet other than Hazrat Adam Islam came from a woman's body. Every one of them had a mother. Okay? Uh, yeah, exactly. Wagma. Yeah, money is power. I can do all of those things by hiring people, hiring men. And I have hired men. They work for me. Uh, wonderful men, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so, prophecy. We were talking about prophecy. There are, there are arguments by some renowned scholars, not new scholars, uh, only new scholars, but scholars from centuries ago. Uh, there was a, a poster here who was kind enough to share the link. If you can share the link again to that paper, which was the research uh, about female prophecy, that would be, really, I think it was Ibn Khazm, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I said except Hazrat Adam. I said except every prophet except Hazrat Adam came from a woman's body. غور سے سنا کریں یہ تو بچوں والی باتیں ہیں یہ تو بیسک باتیں ہیں اسلام کی جو آپ اس کو بھی you know, ٹانگ پکڑنے کی کوشش کر رہے ہیں so, uh, so there are some scholars who basically debate about the fact that was Hazrat Maryam, Hazrat Hajra and Hazrat Musa's mother were they prophets because جو آیت ہے جہاں پہ اللہ تعالی, uh, uh, I think it's um, I can't remember the name of the surah, but jahan pe Hazrat Musa ki walida ke baare mein Allah Ta'ala bata rahe hain ki unko Allah Ta'ala ne inspire kiya to put the baby in the river. The word used is auhayna, uh, uh, auhayna. So auhayna is a word that is the same root word for wahi, same is used. So wahi agar aayi thi aurton ke upar, to... Uh, Umar Saab, business session is coming up, but it's only for women. I coach only women. I decided that a couple of years ago. Anyway, so if we had the same thing, and we also know that Hazrat Maryam had Hazrat Jibreel Amin, and Hazrat Jibreel Amin typically had only prophets, then can a case be made? No, uh, uh, this thing from the rib of a man? No. Saba, this is not true. A woman was not made from the rib, rib of the man. This is this this thing we get from the Jewish texts and Christian texts. Quran mein saaf hai ke ek roo se dono paida huye koi rib ship ka mention nahi hai. Please watch Sitar Akram's video where this is clarified. So some scholars are arguing, mein us argument mein nahi padhti ke aurton ko prophecy mili thi ke nahi. Scholars aapas mein is cheez pe debate karte hai. Mein is baat pe bhi agree kar leti hun ke aurton pe ghambar nahi thi. So, agar aurton pe ghambar nahi thi, does that mean they are inferior to men? Not at all. Aap prophets ki lives ko to dekhe koi prophet aise nahi hai jinke sath violence beadbi badtameezi even qatl tak hua hazrat yahya alai islam ko qatl kar diya gaya aur prophets ko bhi kiya so allah taala ka ye favor tha because we're talking about very very violent times the last prophet came 1500 years ago these were very violent times nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ke sath jo zulm hua aur jo unke sath badtameezi aur badtahzibi logon ne ki you guys know that so, if a female prophet, hoti, to unko har tarah ki ek to dabao ka dar hota, considering the times they were living in, and also, you know, they could have been raped, they could have been harmed in so many other ways, their honor could have been destroyed, and Allah always protects the honor of the message and the prophet. So, it was not feasible for women to be prophets in those days, but in no way does that prove that men are superior to women. And... Um, uh, are men more em uh, emotionally resilient than women? I'm sorry, I can prove it to you from my own life. Like I said, I have fought many battles. Ye jo yahan pe aake aap uh, comical harkatein kar rahe ho, Ijaz. I would love to know what you have accomplished in your own life. What kind of adversity have you got gotten over, beta? Jiski wajah se aapko itna ye zoom hai is cheez ke upar ke I as a man am superior to women. I can cite you some examples. Again, this is public information. Anybody living in America can do this. Uh, uh, Google, um, I am pretty sure that you can find the court records for my case that was um, a state of, uh, you can use my name and state of Texas in that. And uh, it was the abuse case where I defeated the lawyer who was known as the bulldog of Dallas. And it was a very, very tough case. And I was on the cross-examination for at least three hours by one of the lawyers who is considered one of the best attorneys in Dallas. 
and who tried to, you know, barrage me and humiliate me and put a lot of pressure on me. And Alhamdulillah, I won that case without being represented by a lawyer. I did not have a lawyer and I beat that lawyer. I don't have a law degree either. So when it comes to this mental resilience, Alhamdulillah, I have proven again and again that I have it with the grace of my best friend, Allah Ta'ala. So again, make your case, Ijaz. Make your case. How are you superior to women? Then, <clears throat> uh, you know, as I mentioned to you, I think I have covered pretty much all of these things uh, that a man can use to say, ye nahi ho sakta ye. आप लोगों ने अपने मॉशरे में पाकिस्तान में इंडिया में में भी औरतों को पहले ऑप्रेस किया है अच्छी तरह से और उसके बाद जब वो ऑप्रेस हो गई हैं तो आप कहते हैं देखो ना औरत हमारे बगैर ये भी नहीं कर सकती वो भी नहीं कर सकती तो इसमें ये बात तो नहीं प्रूव होती कि आप सुपीरियर हैं इसमें सिर्फ ये बात प्रूव होती है कि आप ऑप्रेसर्स हैं यू आर गोइंग अगेंस्ट what allah commanded you to do what your prophet commanded you to do even before right before uh, our dear prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's death what he said was again and again do not oppress your women do not take away their rights that allah has given to them what have you done main to bahut der se ye baat kar rahi hu maine aapko translation bhi correct batayi hai maine aapko sa aapne kya quran khol ke samajhne ki koshish ki hai ki maybe maybe this woman that i hate so much i dislike her लेकिन मेरा दीन मुझे ये कहता है ये मत देखो कि कौन कह रहा है ये देखो कि क्या कह रहा है तो अगर मेरा मकसद दीन के ऊपर चलना है अपने अल्लाह को फॉलो करना है इफ आई एम ट्रूली अ सर्वेंट एंड स्लेव टू अल्लाह देन मे बी आई शुड ओपन द कुरान एंड रीड दीज थिंग्स माई सेल्फ मैं तो आपको कह रही हूँ खुद पढ़े ना और फिर आप पढ़े वो आखिरी खुतबा अपने प्यारे नबी सलम का जिसमें उन्होंने सख्त वईद की थी कि कितनी अल्लाह की तरफ से आपको क्या आंसरेबल होंगे आप वेन आई वेन यू प्रेस योर वेमेन सो अल्लाह शाहना आल टेल यू समथिंग बेटा वेन यू अंडरस्टैंड कुरान वेन यू रीड इट फ्रॉम दिस लेंस के अल्लाह इज जस्ट अल्लाह इज फेयर एंड अल्लाह इज काइंड जब आप इस लेंस के थ्रू कुरान को पढ़ेंगी एक चीज आपको बहुत क्लियर नजर आएगी और फिर आपको वो सुनना में भी नजर आएगी एंड दैट इज दैट गॉड एंड हिज प्रॉफिट बोथ आर रिलेंटलेस एडवोकेट्स फॉर वेमेन दे आर एडवोकेट्स फॉर वेमेन not oppressors of women and they are advocates for us against men bar bar mardon ko admonish kar rahe hain allah bhi allah ki kitab bhi aur allah ke rasul nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam bhi ab meri message aa gaya hai ki my battery is dying my daughter had told me not to do a very long live because wo abhi she's on is on her way back and by the way alhamdulillah agar aap logon ko ye phir kai logon ko bahut shock hai ye kehne ka ke oh she must be divorced yes i've said it many times aap log gali ke taur pe kehte hain main isko fact ke taur pe bayan kar chuki hu yes alhamdulillah i said no to abuse because i had faith in my rab and i got out of abusive marriages and alhamdulillah i have raised two daughters by myself both of them are amazing human beings i am very proud of them choti bachchi to abhi college mein hai badi is um on her way back to dallas right now which by the way she lives independently by herself in uptown dallas in a high rise building on the 23rd floor jis pe mujhe dar lage but usko nahi lagta because alhamdulillah she's inspired by her mother she's not afraid she has courage she has confidence she's independent she makes her own money and alhamdulillah because she's an assistant coach with me she is impacting the lives of so many people improving the lives of so many people men and women because men have taken coaching from me in the past as well so what do you have to say again make your case how are you a better citizen of this world what are you doing to improve the lives of other human beings if you are such a superior uh, being prove it make your case so uh, for those of you uh, umar ali uh, thank you very much uh for your support and kindness as well please understand this that your voice is very important because jaisa ki aapne dekha hai ki ye jo unintelligent log hain their voices are very loud unko sirf chhalang maar ke aake bas baat kehni hoti hai aur kai dafa mana karne ke bawajood karte jate hain jiski wajah se aaj unko mujhse daant bhi padi hai बट आप लोग जो खामोश रहते हैं मेन हु बिलीव इन द इक्वालिटी ऑफ वेमेन हु आर स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन दे डोंट नीड टू ऑपरेस वेमेन और टू कंट्रोल वेमेन टू फील सुपीरियर राइट सो मेन लाइक यू नीड टू स्पीक अप 
your voices are far more important right now than they have ever been because aap soch nahi sakte hain ki kitni zyada ladkiyon ke mujhe comments aate hain who are too scared to comment publicly because of the backlash but they they send me these comments that it is very refreshing to see that there are strong men who are kind who are considered who see us as equals they do exist hame nahi pata ki kidhar hai but shukar hai ki exist to karte hain so let yourselves be known raise your voices because uh pretty soon i'm going to be actively again uh banning all these people that really just create noise and do no favors to anybody so those of you women who are interested in in learning because i'm on a mission to help empower muslim women who are going to change the world i truly believe this so uh but uh they have to commit to personal growth they have to commit to becoming stronger and they have to spend time with me it's not going to happen overnight there is a lot of deconditioning that needs to happen there's a lot of deep programming that needs to happen uh you know jab log cult mein se nikal ke aate hain even unke pyar karne wale maa baap hote hain unke sath but kyunki wo us cult mein unki itni brain washing hui hoti hai they have to actually go to therapy and they have to spend months in the deprogramming so that they can be normal again so similarly i do a lot of deprogramming of of the women who join me and if you want to get we are going to be announcing that in a few days on this page and and my platforms but if you want to get more information right now you can dm us but please remember give it a little bit of time as soon as natasha gets back uh, she'll be able to respond to those uh, messages thank you very much for watching and please remember Sometimes I trigger you because I really want to shake you. I really want to shake you and say wake up. You know, if you are followers of scholars and you worship your scholars then you are going to get triggered. You know, meri bhi bahut respect hai scholars ke liye. Main bahut scholars ko sunti hu lekin mere liye sirf hukmrani sirf Allah ki hai. Authority sirf Allah ki hai. So we need to stop this uh you know shakhsiyat parasti, idol hero worshiping. एंड मेरी भी ना करें मेरी तो सबसे पहले ना करें मैंने तो बार बार कहा है मेरी बिल्कुल ना करें बिकॉज आई डोंट वॉन्ट बी ऑन अ पेडस्टल यू नो आई एम अ फ्लॉड ह्यूमन बींग पहले ही मैं सबसे आपको बता रही हूँ मुझसे कनेक्ट मत हो जो मेरी स्टूडेंट्स हैं आप इनशाला प्रिटी सून यू विल हेयर फ्रॉम अ फ्यू स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ माइंड माई जॉब इज टू कनेक्ट दैम टू देर ओन सेल्फ एंड अल्लाह तला दैट्स हाउ दे गेट कॉन्फिडेंस दैट्स हाउ दे यू नो ओवरकम फियर एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स इफ यू वॉन्ट गेट मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन डी एम एस and i will keep uh, making more and more videos to inshallah wake you up and to share emotional intelligence with you how to become strong how to become a change maker in this world yeah you know this is time for reform and there are people who are going to do this and there are going to be people who are left behind they're going to be forced to follow eventually because ab ye ho nahi sakta कि आप वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट को रोकें या इस रिफॉर्म को रोकें ये हो नहीं सकता आप जितना मर्जी नफरत करें किसी को फेमिनिस्ट का लेबल लगाएं किसी को कुछ करें ये रुकने वाली ट्रेन है नहीं बिकॉज द टाइम हैज कम यू कैन नॉट स्टॉप इट फ्रॉम हैपनिंग ऑल राइट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग एंड अल्लाह हाफिज